Uh, we'll hand over to our second speaker now, Alex Grove from Mentor Graphics, who's going to talk about improving UVM test bench debug productivity and visibility. Alex has uh, over 20 years' experience in the EDA industry, having worked for Synopsys, Arm, Simplicity, Aldec, One Spin Solutions, and Mentor Graphics. He has experience in design and verification of ASICs and FPGAs, functional safety, and the broad knowledge of the EDA industry. After graduating from Master University with an honours degree in electronic engineering and computer science, Alex joined Synopsys Northern Europe to work on synthesis and test. During his time at Mentor, Alex has worked as a product specialist for high-level synthesis and virtual prototyping and is now working as European application engineer for functional verification with a focus on simulation and FBJ-based prototyping. So over to you. Okay, can you hear me? Thanks. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about um, debug and um, focusing on, on UVM. And it's interesting, my mic's uh, and we're talking when he introduced today's session. So um, I think it's third week at Mentor, and one of the things that has changed uh, is there's a, a new debug um, a, a methodology and, and basically a tool that I'm going to be talking about today called Visualizer. This uh, sort of extends on, on capabilities um, to provide a new environment. And I think when I, when I look at this, kind of there's three key components that we're talking about today. One is, um, I don't really talk too much about it, there's the, the infrastructure, so there's a new way of actually generating the debug data. And that's kind of uh, then enables two key aspects um, where it's not just UVM, but um, we're going to be demonstrating this when looking at UVM, is the ability to navigate, so how you navigate these complex uh, test environments, and then be how you can gain visibility. So that engine, put with the improvements in performance, uh, allows or sort of facilitates that. And then what we'll try to, to do to demonstrate some of these capabilities with some uh, sort of uh, common sort of debug challenges or use cases. So to start with a question, um, who has a test bench or a test environment that looks like this? No one? To be fair, I mean, most of mine do, uh, for my examples. <laughs> <laughs> but um, does it look more like this? So this is a, a, a real block level test bench, and I'm sure those are probably more complicated. But the, the purpose of this is to sort of demonstrate you know, how complicated uh, a UVM uh, test environment uh, is. Uh, and you'll find multiple layers, and there's obviously uh, the inheritance, it's very parameterizable for things like reuse, um, they have complex scoreboards, um, there's reuse, ver verification IP, and there's probably history in there as well. I mean, there's probably years of code have some compromises we've made over time. So it's a very large, complex piece of, of software. And I think, I think just the, the UVM um, classes is somewhere in the range of uh, 330 or more class libraries. So I think it'd be fair to say it's probably unrealistic uh, to expect one single individual to truly understand all the workings of these environments. So one of the things we'll be talking about is navigation um, and how we how we how we you know visualize our our, our environment. So even something that's been um, you know well structured. So this is a picture of Paris. Um, because of the just the size of it, that's what drives the complexity. It's not that it's particularly champion difficult. It's, it's the size that makes it very uh, complex. And then you have to deal with the fact that. Um, not, it may start out to be, to be well structured, but then there's a certain amount of organic growth. Um, you know, um, that, that can add an extra layer uh, of complexity. So really, I don't know about you. When I go to say London or Paris, I use a map. Um, I use a metro map or, or the tube map, and that gives me two things. One, it's kind of gives me the confidence. I think that's kind of key thing uh, we're talking about today to know where I am and then gives me the ability to work out where I need to go. So and that's kind of been one of the things we were talk about. We talk about navigation and, and obviously clues in the name of the product is how we visualize that and that, that can help us um, in, in our debug. So starting off with a like navigation wish list. So if I'm talking to customers, the sort of Requirements really, um, you know, is to understand uh, the hierarchy, the component hierarchy, and have that in some sort of abstract form so that you can you know, filter it, search it, display information in a graphical form. Uh, I know it's a cliche, and we talk about picture is a thousand words or a thousand lines of UVM, but you know, having something a graphical representation, just like our tube map, 
um, to really help us understand um, um, yeah, the, the, the complex environment. Having the ability to link the graphical representation with source code and vice versa. And then finally, uh, obviously a key requirement when we're looking at uh, new VM is ability to understand objects and classes and the object orientated design techniques, whether there, uh, there'll be some sort of class topology um, for, for, for the design, understanding how things inherit, uh, inheritance, parameterization, um, things like configuration, you know, what members are in scope, etc. And these requirements really sort of drove uh, the development of um, a new debug environment that we call Visualizer. And Visualizer is kind of a catch-all term for this new approach, uh, and uh, it's a graphical uh, debug environment. And this has been um, designed for these requirements and for today and tomorrow's uh, verification environments. So, so one of the key things is to, to, to make the environment intuitive. Now, I'll let you be the judge of, of that. Um, recently, I've gone through this for the first time, and, and it is, you know, I, I found it intuitive bringing up the tool. The only thing for those of you that are existing sort of mental uh, customers using Questa, there was a new uh, debug approach that we haven't really talked about for generating the debug data. So there's an alternative flow to um, Wolf. Um, so to generate the data to make sure that you've, you've enabled what you want to observe. Um, into the databases, but once you've, you've done that, it's really straightforward to, to bring up the debugger. One thing I should make clear um, is that this environment is both uh, interactive as well as post-simulation, or post-process, I should say, because it works with, uh, we'll talk about some of the different uh, verification engines, so, but it works with other engines, uh, not just uh, with a simulation requester. So you can use it interactive, uh, just like today, you would use uh, do interactive debug, but what we now refer to as a TK, debug environment, and we like to think it's, you know, it has a natural layout and it's relatively straightforward once you, you know, as long as you're familiar with what the things are and the UVM speak, uh, I'd say it's, it's relatively uh, in, intuitive. Because we want it clickable, uh, we want you to navigate around, uh, it's obviously put a lot of effort to make sure it's responsive, whether in the waveform, look at the source views or the various different views that we have, so to make sure that it's responsive so that when you click something, some, something happens. There are some... Um, some graphical views, and um, we've extended the graphical views, I'll talk about uh, more in, in later, so you can obviously visualize things like the RTL, uh, gate level, uh, and there are some uh, graphical views that are targeted towards UVM, and we'll go into it more detail uh, later. And then finally, we've then synchronized all the various views, so when you're displaying the data, then the tool is always synchronized, whether that be in time or in space, and by space, I'm really referring to like if you're selecting hierarchy in the RTL topology, you'll be seeing inputs and outputs for that block. Or if you're in the UVM world and you're selecting some some object, you'll have the the member functions or the things that belong to to that object or within that scope. So full visibility. So what do we mean by that? So I guess the first thing that I suppose it may be historically um, when we are using debug, we're debugging with waveforms. And we have a, a, a um, which essentially we're logging signals. We can extend that with the concept of transactions, where we store a sort of a, a message and then display that over time. Well, with the visualizer, we've brought the two worlds together. So there is, I suppose, using the Eclipse way, there are two perspectives. There is the the UVM test environment perspective, which is essentially like a a, 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 a software program. Uh, and then we have the, our RTL world, where we have consuming time and we have you know, signals. And, and hierarchy. So we have those two um, worlds in the same tool, and you have two sort of contexts where you look at it. And, and importantly, both those worlds are synchronized. As well as that, then a sort of a key capability that we'll be talking about and that we we'll demonstrate a few times uh, today, and both interactively and in post simulation, you can trace your class objects. You can even trace. Um, trace dynamic objects and see them um, be um, destroyed by garbage collection. So this ability to actually trace a class is very, very powerful. That can apply to various objects in UVM sequences. Um, you can look at the, the, ha the handles of those objects, the contents, importantly, uh, and, the, and the context. And uh, alongside of that, you can then trace your, your RTL signals in, in, a, in the same environment. And as you expect, then there are capabilities of looking at transactions and messages, which obviously is very important for, for UVM.
So in order to um, try and demonstrate these sending capabilities, um, we took um, the, uh, well, essentially some reference representations available on the, um, the Verification Academy. Are there those that are familiar with the Verification Academy? Um, Gordon Allen uh, has put together a, a presentation where he goes into much more detail, and um, Gordon's obviously a, a UVM expert, of these different challenges. And these challenges come from looking at the Verification Academy forums and common questions, and we've collated those. I don't believe there's any particular um, order of precedence, and they're just they're being, being collated in this order. And what I'm going to talk about today is just the, the top five as a way of sort of demonstrating some of the, uh, the capabilities of the, of the visualizer tool. So one potential um, error um, would be in the config. So in the show of hands, who's had problems or, um, with their uh, config database? Excellent, one hand there, doesn't have worked so much with, with being online. So if you have a problem, I mean, how would you debug it? <laughs> so essentially there are, there are you, you, there's a number of techniques here, but I think, I don't know if you agree, essentially doing the, the printing the information, so the equivalent of printf debug, um, where we're dumping out the, the configuration. So obviously with our visualizer tool, we have the ability to visualize that, and there's various information such as the type, the hierarchical path or regular expression, um, the value, and then there's some sort of diagnostic information that talks about and um, gives you information regarding activity of how often it was written to uh, and whether it, it was read. Okay, so that might give you some, if you have a problem, it might give you some um, by inspection, some clues as to what, um, what the problem could be regarding um, configuration. Uh, in the same vein, um, what about um, keeping track of your factory overrides? Would anyone say they've had problems with that? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so obviously the factory's been there since since the beginning, um, and well, I'm not going to go for this sort of code example. This is just to illustrate what we mean by factory overrides. A number of ways you can do this, but importantly, what what will happen? Um, in our visualizers, we can visualize the factory. So by inspection, we can see that the class factory, um, including um, the, the various parameterizations that are taking place, and then importantly, we can also see the factory overrides and sort of runtime sort of configuration. So we can do that by inspection. Again, use that as a tool to give us insight uh, as to you know what the, the setup of our test environment is. And again, this may be just to give you confidence. You, know, you tick these things off quickly and you can then move on to, to debugging other aspects of the, of, the, of the test bench. So number three was diagnosing a TLM hookup. Who's had problems with um, TLM hookup? No? Nope. <laughs> so obviously we'll be before this connection uh, in the transaction level uh, during the connect phase. Uh, we connect in our, our monitors scoreboards and drivers, coverage objects, etc. So there are you know, multiple places of failure, I mean, you might connect something up in the wrong way, so you've connected two things that shouldn't be connected with, you know, with the complex hierarchy, maybe an issue with configuration if you use passing uh, uh, version interface through the, the config, um, maybe you haven't actually connected an analysis port, so something's not getting traffic data, so there's essentially the test bench isn't checking anything. So I mean, how would you check the connections in your RTL world? in your RTL duct. I, myself, maybe my background, I always want to have schematic. So one of the capabilities of the schematic view is that's been extended the sort of things that you might have in, in the RTL world to, to view your, your RTL topology design. There's a very abstract view of uh, the UVM uh, sort of topology. So it's not really, you know, it's not a, a schematic in the same way that you may be familiar from RTL and synthesis and, and, and RTL viewers, it's a representation of your UVM environment. So it's showing the connectivity. So I appreciate it's very small on the screen today, but we have a dot in there which will be connected through virtual interfaces to various agents. Uh, there's a scoreboard, and uh, the scoreboard we can see is connected to the analysis ports. And if we push into the various agents, we'll see the topology of the, the monitor, the driver, uh, the sequencer. So it's a way for you to, to visualize um, your UVM uh, environment. And this is done in context to all the other views inside, um, inside the, uh, the visualizer tool. And obviously it can be um, hierarchical as you go through your environment. In actual fact, this has been used by customers uh, as a way of, of sort of helping new members of the team understand uh, the test environment. 
and I guess what's important, and not showing what I'm seeing doing, PowerPoint slide, it's very clickable in the sense that as you click things, source code windows will be updated. So as you click on the, the various agents, the source code will update to, to that particular um, the functionality of that agent. So sequences, sequences, um, you, know, you have a number of layers to, uh, and complexity of sequences as they uh, apply to a given sequencer. So you know, how do you know what's running? Uh, how do you understand you know, um, what the, um, what's running when and why? And how would you debug that? So would that be through single stepping, um, our print, printf? debug approach. I'll well, be no surprise now, I hope you're, there's a theme to, the, to this. Um, we have a way of visualizing that. So we can visualize the sequences that are running on a given sequencer and we can see those over time and understand the activity um, of, of those sequences live to aid the, the, the debug. Then finally, talking about scoreboards. So we talk about debugging scoreboards, but I'm really, when we say debugging and why they're brittle, and probably why they're problematic, I don't know if you agree, scoreboards can be very complicated because of the nature of the function, what they're doing, the use of classes, uh, the use of you know, all, all these data structures. So there's, there's, there's lots of scope because they're complicated for errors. Um, and really, to, you know, debug, maybe single stepping, um, that, they, that, uh, that behavior. But what we can do, as we mentioned earlier, is we can drag, you know, we can trace those classes of the scoreboard. So now we can see what's happening inside the scoreboard over time, um, because we're able to to visualise uh, those objects in a in a in a, in a way called view. So to summarise, what I you know what I've focused on today, which is to, in a short presentation, is just to hopefully introduce you to. Uh, as it was to me, uh, there is a, a new way, uh, a new environment for performing debug, um, and that's been built for uh, speed and performance, so it's a sort of next generation. In actual fact, we've not talked about any of the RTL features. There's a whole host of RTL debug features that you'll be familiar with, and in actual uh, customers have, have adopted the, this approach um, for things like performance and capacity. Because we have that, then um, it allows us to provide new capabilities, you know, tracing things like class objects, and that the whole point of this is to help you, um, you know, find bugs more quickly, uh, and then hopefully fix those bugs more quickly. And, and the point of that is to provide productivity for you and, and your team. So you know, we built it for, um, for today and tomorrow's complex projects, whether that be um, using system variable or classes. I mean, that, that's obviously just support as well. We mainly focus on UVM today, and of course, um, UVM debug. And then finally, I uh, always like to finish on, on time with Mike, um, is I've t only talked about Questa today and simulation, but one of the things um, I think is really important is from a uh, going forward, Visualizer will be a common debug environment across all our functional engines. So whether that be Questa for simulation that we're talking about today or Veloce emulation, in actual fact, the, sort of the use model of those two is very, very similar. So that makes it very easy to, to move from A to B. Uh, or obviously uh, formal, and there's, you know, we have not talked about any of the assertion-based verification, so you have those capabilities for simulation or, or for, for formal. And then an area that I'm also working on, which is uh, a new area in the sense of, uh, from, a, a, from a product, is FPGA prototyping, and we will be using Visualizer for our, our debugger. So we'll provide a common debug environment across these multiple engines. Okay, so hopefully that that's concludes the presentation. Thank you for your time, so hopefully we have a bit of time for questions. So we have two questions and they're still hard to answer. Okay. <laughs> How much does um, Visualizer interface to any software development system I may be using uh, to produce code to run on the processor that I may be testing? That's a good question. We had um, Vista, which is the virtual prototype solution, so I don't know. That's um, something that we're working towards, is my understanding, but I can certainly find out and get some more details. But that is the intent, to have a common you know, environment um, for all these different engines and obviously software in there as well. Okay, Roger. Yeah. One more question from the back, Sergio. 
can you do any what if analysis like manipulation of waveforms and uh, <laughs> or <laughs> you said you wouldn't ask me any hard questions so <laughs> uh, I don't know That's the answer I don't know I'll find out for you no questions online no questions from... okay 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 so thank you. thank you very much Alex thank you